So 6.6 .6 looks at logical protection. So these are all the things that don't come under physical protections of uh, information. So let's have a look at uh, what some of these might look like. Okay, so first of all, we've got this idea of tier levels of access to data. Okay, so obviously tiers, if you think of a wedding cake, you know, it might have three tiers on it, tier one, tier two, tier three, for example. And some people will get access to, to just the first tier. Other people, maybe a little bit higher up the, the chain, or maybe because they have a different job role within the uh, organization, they may have access to data that's higher up. Uh, and the third tier may only be accessible to someone who works in data security, or maybe just the top managers in the organization, or just the finance department, for example. So you... Um, if you think about it in terms of uh, layers, people in the bottom layer, they get certain access. People in the next layer, they get more access. And people in the layer above that, they might get access to everything. So it's this idea of only allowing people access to stuff that they need access to. And then we've got firewalls. Now, these can be hardware-based or they can be software-based. So many of you may already have some kind of firewall software. It is built into Mac OS. It is built into Windows 10. There are also uh, applications you can download. Uh, often these are uh, free. So paid for ones include things like Norton and McAfee. And there are free ones such as AVG and uh, Avantis and so on. And these um, uh, bits of software often contain antivirus and firewall combined into one. And they create lists um, so that any software that you need to get out onto the uh, internet or any software that needs information from the internet, that gets put on the uh, you know access list or the white list. And then there may be another list, a, a black list or a, a, you know, a non-access list uh, and that would be looking for anything on the internet that you don't want coming through uh, onto your system. So firewalls block data packets from going out or from coming in to the ports on your computer. Anti-malware, again, this is something that most people will already have uh, on their system or, you know, if they bought uh, a new computer, they may, it may have come with a 30 day trial of a, a piece of software and malware, any malicious software. So ads that uh, you don't want, uh, it could be unwanted cookies, uh, viruses, Trojans, ransomware, anything that is designed with malicious intent to get access to your computer system or to uh, in some way do some damage to your data or your, or your system itself. So any piece of software that looks for and tries to prevent viruses and Trojans and so on getting access to your computer system, these are known as anti-malware applications. We already looked at obfuscation in a previous topic, that's the idea that we partially anonymize or we partly hide uh, information that we don't want people to be able to see. Okay, so if you've got um, uh, credit card numbers, debit card numbers, bank account details, we might partially uh, hide some of that information or completely hide some of that information with alternative characters um, so that... Uh, you know, other people can't see the whole number and then do something with it that we wouldn't want them to. Encryption of data at rest. Uh, this is anything that's basically stored, usually on memory sticks or hard drives, um, external storage devices. And that data is often then encrypted with something like BitLocker. Uh, quite often it's password protected or there may be a, a, a number, like a six-digit number that you have to type in before you can access the data 
on that storage device. Encryption of data in transit is a similar idea, but this is data that's moving around. So uh, built into many email clients, uh, Microsoft Outlook and Mozilla Thunderbird and so on, is usually uh, built in the ability to uh, encrypt any emails that you may send to somebody else so that only the recipient of the email can unencrypt and read the contents. So encryption of data at rest and encryption of data in transit are similar things, but one is sitting in storage and the other is like on the move. And obviously password protection is important. You might have a password to get onto the actual uh, computer. You might have a password, uh, you know, on the BIOS to stop people messing with the system in that way. There's usually a password to get onto, uh, onto the actual network, or to, you know, sign into the domain. There may be another password to get onto the cloud-based uh, systems and storage. Uh, any encryption uh, may have a, its own password or PIN number protection. So... You know, password protection is obviously widely used. So here's an example uh, from Microsoft of uh, levels of access. So you can see tier zero, people have got access to servers uh, and the relevant things that are stored on those servers. People who've got tier one access get those servers, but also access to cloud. Uh, servers in the cloud, cloud storage, and any apps that may exist on the cloud. And if you've got tier two access, then you also have access to, uh, you know, to these systems if you bring your own devices and uh, tablets and smartphones and uh, multi-factor authentication, for example, uh, may exist on these devices. And you get the option to be able to use extra devices such as printers and, and faxes and scanners and so on. So those are the kind of different um, access levels that can be set on these systems. Okay, so uh, that basically is logical protections. So let's have a look at a exam question. Now this is from the sample paper. And the question asks us to identify three logical protection measures other than obfuscation. And the reason they have said that is because there is a, a previous question uh, a, a higher up that already uh, had a question on that. That could be used by progress vision, again, from the case study, to help keep information secure and then justify why each of these measures could keep information secure. So three measures for three marks and then the justification for the further marks. So they're just looking for you to show some understanding of what these logical protection measures are and what they actually do. So here are the uh, kind of things that they were looking for, okay? So six marks. So one mark for identifying um, the actual uh, logical protection method. And an extra two marks for the justifications. Multiply that by three. You've got your um, six marks there. So the first one, they talk about tiered levels of access to data. Why? Well, because it can reduce the number of people that have access to the sensitive and confidential data, and it prevents people from having full access to things they're not supposed to have access to, uh, only allowing editing to be done whenever it needs to be edited, and uh, you know, reducing any uh, potential issues with the uh, uh, information in the data sets there. You could have mentioned anti-malware applications because obviously these sit on your computer systems and they monitor any strange activity and they try to prevent viruses and worms and trojans and ransomware from getting onto the systems, from locking up the files, from replicating themselves, uh, corrupting the data or, or bringing the systems to a grinding stop. Uh, encryption of data at rest, you could have mentioned because this is obviously going to prevent people uh, illegal access to the data from hackers, for example. Um, and it helps to protect the data, you know, when you're transporting uh, your physical device between maybe one office and another or an office and, uh, you know, someone's home. 
you could have mentioned, um, uh, you know, these kind of electronic, um, almost like a, uh, a, a trash can uh, if you're using Mac OS or uh, it's the bin, isn't it? The recycled bin if you're using Windows 10. But they kind of sit there in the bin and if you want to get them back, then you can get them back. But there are applications that you can buy, um, uh, you know, or download even for free. Uh, and they act like recycle bins. But once you have dropped the file into this, uh, uh, you know, icon, instead of you being able to get it back later, it's gone and it can't be recovered. So it allows you to remove data uh, from your system um, so that, you know, there's no way anybody can get that back uh, later on. And all of these things help us to comply with debt protection legislation uh, uh, because the whole point of this is to keep people's data safe and to keep us within the law. And once again, any other reasonable and valid suggestion to this question would have, uh, you know, picked you up some marks. So you need to know the difference between the logical protections and you need to know the difference um, from the uh, physical protections and it, obviously you need to be able to um, apply that to the context of whatever question the exam board may come up with.